on, my friends. I <clears throat> just wanted to jump on and just share something that's been on my heart. Um, it's New Year, 2021 is upon us, um, January 4th, and I've had a few days to sort of process um, just life. And I was just thinking about it yesterday and the day before, and I just thought, man, this is something I feel like I should share because I'm sure that there are a lot of you that are feeling the same way I am. And, um, and so I, I thought, hey, this is what encouraged me. And, you know, as we're walking this thing out, this, this walk of faith, it's a journey and, and it's not, you're not meant to walk alone. Uh, you're meant to walk together. And I know 2021 is going to be a year that we as believers are going to have to stick together. And this goes for anybody. Um, I don't care if I've met you in person or I've just met you through Instagram. Um, we're called to do this life together. And, and right now, because of our circumstances, uh, this is what we have. And this is the way we can do life and encourage each other. So I was thinking about um, 2020 and so often, and even myself, I was, I was not guilty of this, but I, was, I got caught up in this. I, this whole idea of, I can't wait to get to the holidays. I can't wait to get to Christmas and New Year's. And we're gonna be able to, to say goodbye to 2020 and the New Year's gonna be here and we're gonna be able to start fresh. And, and, I, and I love that idea. I mean, it's not a bad idea. It's not something that I think is, is, is a terrible way to think. But I believe when you go in, you go into the new year or to when going into the holidays with that mindset, um, I believe we we're setting ourselves up for failure. And what I mean by that is, you know, when the end of December came around and we were holidays were here, new year's was upon us. Coronavirus was in full, full steam ahead. You know, we were in the middle of a, a terrible pandemic. Um, you know, for those of us who are, are living a life, you know, uh, the, in living in the real world, the bills are, are rolling in, you know, the rent has to be paid, you know, the light bill has to be paid, the food bill has to be paid. There's all of the unknown, you know, there's the election results. We still don't know who the president is. Um, there's all this, he said, she said, what if this happens? What if that happens? And so there's, there's panic and anxiety with that, right? Um, and then personally, you know, I just found out that my, my dad may have cancer. You know, my mom, you know, my mom and dad who I'm not very close to, but man, in the middle of, of hearing about their, their health and potential threat to their life, I mean, that makes things real. You know, my mom just went through a major heart surgery. They found a tumor on her heart uh, a couple months ago and thank God it was benign, but she had a tumor in her heart. They had to go and do a full blown eight hour surgery to remove the tumor. And so all of that is going through my head. And, you know, I found all this out, you know, in December. And so this was 2020, you know, and then for me, I don't know if you guys knew, I mentioned a couple weeks ago, a month ago that I was having some, you know, anxiety and some stress and health stuff. And I'd gone to the doctor and the doctor was like, man, you're just super anxious. You need to let go of some things. And this is why I've been a little distant. You know, I haven't been doing videos every day like I used to. Um, I've just been trying to chill, you know, and I'm still having some, some issues. And I don't know if it's anxiety. I don't know if there's something physically wrong. I'm actually going to the doctor today um, to let him know, to do a follow-up and see. Because I may have a tumor in my heart. I don't know. I mean, what's causing you know, me to have a little rapid heartbeats and stuff like that? I don't know. The whole point is this. That was all 2020. And when I went to sleep on New Year's Eve and I woke up on January 1, 2021, guess what? The, the coronavirus and the pandemic were still full steam ahead. Now they have this other variant, mutant strain that's out there. Uh, the bills are still coming. You know, the bills still need to be paid. The unknown of the future, the financial, you know, situation in the world, the, um, the election results still, there's still no, we still don't know who the president is. Um, my dad's diagnosis is still unknown. Um, he still has an issue. Um, my mom, she's still recovering. She's still getting older. He's getting older. I'm getting older. You know, and right now I, I still have a little bit of a rapid heartbeat in my chest. So I, so, so, so the point is, is that the calendar flipped 
but the problems are still here. And that's, that's the bigger, the bigger point is that it was Jesus who said that you will face problems. You will face trials in this world, in your life. And there were many warnings in the scriptures and I had to go to the scriptures because I had to find comfort in the midst of the storms. Cause you guys see me through a lens and you think that my life is perfect and it's not. I'm dealing with problems just like you are. You fill in the blanks with all that stuff I just said, financial woes, maybe you've lost your job, maybe you're dealing with health issues, maybe you're dealing with relational issues, marriage issues, maybe your kids are sick, maybe your kids are, you know, the prodigal children, they're away and they're, you're just praying for them to come home or come to the Lord, whatever it is. They're trials. James 1 says, count it all joy when you face trials. Because when your faith is tested, it produces steadfastness. It was Peter who said in 1 Peter 4, don't be surprised at the fiery trials. And then we can fight about context all day long about what was going on. At the end of the day, trials are trials. Whether you're dealing with persecution or you're dealing with the loss of a job, dealing with health issues, it's all from Satan. He's, he's attacking you. And it's even going to come harder if you're following Jesus. Paul in Romans 5, he says, Rejoice in your sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. So that's just a few of countless warnings in the scriptures about followers of Christ and the problems that they are going to find in this life, the troubles. But here, here's what we are to do. Romans 12 is Paul again saying, Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be patient in those problems, be constant in prayer. So he's saying, take it to the Lord. Don't walk alone. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. God, thank you for these trials. They're, they're producing strength. Your, your power, God, is made perfect in my weakness. Why? Because I depend on you in the midst of the storm. says, let your request be known and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds. That peace, what is that peace? Jesus spoke of this peace in John 14. He said, this peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. The spirit, Jesus is right here with me right now. Jesus gave me his spirit. He leaves us peace that, that can't be bought only by surrender and submission to Christ, giving our life to Him. My friends, these promises, there are promises for us and this is where I need to go when I'm having trials. This is where you need to go when you're having trials. Open up the Word of God and see what God says about this. Romans 8, 18, the sufferings we face, consider them nothing compared to the glory that will be revealed. We're walking in this life and this is so temporary. The glory that is to come makes this, this is just like a blip. Romans 8, 28, God works all things out for the good of those who, who love him and are called according to his purpose. The coronavirus will be worked out. The bills that are coming in, the unknown, the election results, my, my dad's cancer, possible cancer, my mom's tumor in her heart, my, my heart issue, all of it is going to be worked out. And it's all going to, to bring glory to the Lord. The Lord is going to use all of these things. All of these things are going to backfire on Satan. And we're going to look back years from now and we're going to say, man, you remember all that, time, that time, that time, man, I grew stronger in my, in my walk with God. People came to faith because of that coronavirus. You know, the world changed for the good. You know, believers were, were they, they woke up during the coronavirus. There's going to be so many things we're going to be able to look at and we're going to be able to rejoice in. But it's John 16, 33, and this is the promise that I want you guys to hear. It's Jesus saying that I've told you these things. I've told you these things so that you may have peace. In this world, you will face trials. You will face problems. You will face persecution. You will face 
sickness, you will face financial strain, you will face broken relationships, you will face death. But take heart. I've overcome the world. I've overcome sin. I've overcome death. And because you're in me, you will overcome as well. And he leaves us with a promise at the end of John 14, 27. You know, he's telling us that, that this peace that he gives us, this peace that he leaves us with, this is not peace that the world gives. This is a peace that only Jesus gives. But he, le- he ends that, that, that sentence by saying, don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't be afraid. There's a reason he was telling his disciples this. And this is the reason that he's telling us this. Because there are times like this where you're questioning and you're doubting everything. And my friends, just because 2021 is here, it does not mean that the problems just stay in 2020. No, we carried them forward with us. We will have to walk in trials and in tribulation. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it is what it is. How are you going to deal with this? Are you just going to let what the world says, oh, make a resolution, make a new year goal, you know, just leave 2020 behind and move forward. You guys know that that's not possible. It's not. So my friends, I love you with the love of Jesus. And I tell you all of this to encourage you, to challenge you, to let you know that there are promises that are rich and they are for you. If you are in Christ, these promises are for you. And if you're not in Christ, these promises can be for you. If you're not saved, hit me up. I'd love to talk to you. I'd love to pray for you. I'd love to pray with you. My friends, I love you with the love of Jesus. Thank you for joining me on this. I don't even want to call it an episode because it is, I guess it is straight talk, but um, I'm just going to sh- put it on um, for you guys to, to be encouraged and just let you know I'm thinking of you. So.